What's going on everybody? This is Max the Catfish and today I'll be ranking the four starting spawn locations in Satisfactory from my least favorite to my most favorite. I'm going to give you a sneak peek into each area, its pros and cons, and at the end I'm going to let you in on my little secret of the best starting base location in the game. This is like top tier base location. I think you're going to like it. Let's get into it. When you start a game of Satisfactory, you have to choose to spawn in one of four general areas on the map. All four spawns are connected on the same map, and choosing one only determines where your player first arrives on the planet, but you can always freely move between them when you're in the game. When I'm comparing the four spawn locations in the game, I'm considering four main factors. First of all, the purity, diversity, and clustering of nearby resources. The terrain and how easy it is for you to build in that area. The accessibility of coal and fuel for power production and the design and the aesthetics of the area. That is, how nice is it to actually build a base there? These four factors tied into how I rank the four spawn areas in the game, and we are going to jump right into it with number four, the grass fields. This is the de facto starting location for players just starting Satisfactory. I started here. This is a beautiful, wide, lush plain with really flat building areas and a really great start for new players who want to feel immersed in the game. I gotta say, of all of the spawn locations, this one is probably my favorite when it comes to feeling like you are on this beautiful new planet. But that's where the pros of the grass fields really end. There are a lot of issues that I have with the grass fields. First of all, there is the lowest number of pure nodes in this area. In the grass field spawning area, there are no pure iron nodes, no pure copper nodes. There are a handful of pure limestone nodes, which is great because you need a lot of concrete in the game, but you really only have access to Caterium. You've got a little bit of sulfur just on the edge of that area there, but the other specialty resources like quartz and bauxite are nowhere to be found. It's really a problem. It is worth mentioning there is a pure coal node kind of close to a little bit of water, but to actually use that to the best effect, you need to build at least 12 water extractors for an entire coal power plant. And you don't really have that nearby. There is a massive logistical issue with this. There is one area close by that has four coal nodes and some water nearby. It's probably the location I would recommend for new players to start up their first coal factory. But the location of oil for expanding into fuel power plants is pretty far away too, which is another issue. There are a bunch of power supply issues in the grass fields that you're going to have to contend with. And this, along with the lack of pure nodes in the area, is the reason that the grass fields ranks fourth in my list of spawns in the game. Number three, the Dune Desert. Now this was added in update three, so if you're just coming back to Satisfactory after a long break, this one might be new to you. They actually rebuilt the desert from the ground up and they did a really great job with it. It is fantastic. And the number one pro of this area is there are pure nodes galore. There are so many pure nodes here. 11 pure iron, three pure copper, three pure limestone, two pure coal, and five normal coal. And that's just within the spawn circle in the game. There are so many nodes in this area. Not only that, but you've got access to Caterium and Sulfur. Quartz is close by, but it's clustered. And it has some of the flattest terrain in the game, which allows you to make these massive, sprawling megabases in this area. This is where my megabase is located on our Twitch stream. We actually built a massive bus-style base in the desert because I knew it was the greatest area for us to do so without running into rocks and other issues. Add to the list of pros, you've got oil close-ish, it's nearby, and there's actually more biomass here than you would think. The game made it sound like there's almost none. It is really restricted to that little oasis area, but getting there and grabbing some biomass to fuel those biomass generators in the beginning of the game wasn't so bad. Now, that was a lot of pros. You might be thinking, what's wrong with this place? And there is a big issue that I have. Primarily, almost everything in this region is spread out. There are almost no clusters of same type resources. They are super spread out from one another, and that is designed to be the challenge of the Dune Desert area, is there is a massive logistical challenge of building a factory when your source of iron and copper and limestone are pretty spread out from one another. 
In the Dune Desert, there's one cluster of a pure iron, copper, and limestone node, but it's really difficult to build around. There are these pillars in the way that make it really tough to build a base there. So you've got to keep that in mind. It's definitely a bit of a challenge. The coal and pretty much everything else is a logistical challenge in its own right. The coal is really far away from iron sources or water sources, so you have to belt things across the entire desert to get them to the locations that you need them to be. For the super late game, a source of bauxite is hard to come by, and you're going to need this to be able to move into the Mark V belts and other late game constructions. There is a source of bauxite in the swamp, but if we remember what happened the last time we were there, I'd rather go to the other side of the map like we're doing on stream this week. Hey, crash site. Wow! <laughs> oh my god! 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 Probably one of my biggest issues with the Dune Desert, and this wasn't so apparent at the beginning when I first started there, but it's become more apparent as I spent more time, is Everything is the same color. It is completely barren. Yes, duh, it's a desert, but it's gotten really samey. And not only that, but there are barely any flowers nearby for me to use as pigment for my color gun. So even if I wanted to add a splash of color to this area, it's really tough to get access to that stuff unless I go elsewhere. I'm enjoying the challenge of the Dune Desert, especially as someone with a lot of time in the game. But when it comes to clustered pure nodes, this really isn't the place. The Dune Desert presents a really great logistical challenge for experienced players, but it doesn't rank very highly in my list of spawns. Next up is the Rocky Desert. Now, this was the location of our Update 2 build, and when Update 3 came out, I decided to completely scrap the entire base and move to the Dune Desert. Uh, but I really enjoyed my time in the Rocky Desert. There's a bunch going for it. It's got a relatively flat area of land that you can build in if you'd like to. It's got good clusters of pure iron, copper. It's close to Caterium, Quartz, and Bauxite, which is great. There are three pure coal nodes right next to the water, so advancing to coal power is relatively simple. And you're pretty close to a supply of oil but there is no sulfur here at all. Getting access to sulfur is probably one of your larger logistical challenges. It's really difficult to build around this area as well. You are going to have parts of the environment coming through your base like I did originally. The pure nodes are nestled in these rocky crevices which are hard to navigate around. There are some big vertical distances between where most of your resources are and that coal plateau, which provides a pretty big logistical challenge for you. The flattest part of this terrain has no resources on it. It's completely barren. So while you could build a mega base here, you'd have to bring all of the resources to the base, which, you know, that's a style of base if you want to run it that way. Aside from that one cluster of the pure copper, iron, and limestone nodes next to each other, the other clusters of resources are pretty far out. They're actually on the other side of the desert. So if you want to expand to those, you might end up using trains or trucks to bring them to your main base. But in my opinion, the worst thing about the Rocky Desert is there are not one, not two, but three caves full of kittens and they are right next door. They aren't exactly the kind of neighbors that I wanted to have close to me. The Rocky Desert is a great area. It provides a pretty neat logistical challenge and has most of the resources you could potentially need in the game, but it's not my number one. So that means my number one spawn location for Satisfactory has got to be the pink forest. No, I'm just kidding. It's the northern forest. This place is freaking awesome. Not only is it a beautifully crafted area, but it has just the resources you need. And in these awesome, compact, pure resource clusters that make it really easy for you to make a massive, very efficient base. In the primary cluster inside of the northern forest, you have got six pure iron nodes, one pure copper node, and one pure limestone. That is great for an early base. It is close-ish to oil, and the coal is clustered around a water source, but it's kind of far away. So those are the two issues that you're going to deal with. But that cluster of resources, and all of them being pure nodes, makes this far and above all of the other locations in the game. With that comes the major con of this area, which is inside of the spawn circle, there really aren't any advanced resources. The Caterium, the Quartz, the Bauxite, and the Sulfur are all spread out. They're pretty far away from where your main base is going to be. 
That's not the end of the world. At least they are clustered together so you can make a dedicated Caterium factory, a dedicated factory for processing bauxite. These are definitely the logistical challenge that you're going to need to face in the Northern Forest. That aside, I love this area. Building in it is really interesting and fun. You've got these winding rivers that wind through in just a beautiful way, and these natural paths which you can use for automating your trucks in the early game if you'd like to. That all said, there is one location in the game that I feel is better than any other. And actually, it's very close to the spawning location in the Northern Forest. When I first started my offline game of Satisfactory, I actually created a starter base inside of the Northern Forest and then expanded to this location later where I made this sprawling city-like base and it has everything you could possibly want. That location is right here. Just outside of the spawn circle of the Northern Forest, you have access to four pure iron nodes, two pure copper nodes, two limestone, two quartz. You've got iron and coal right next to each other, just begging to be turned into steel. You've got a coal node that is right next to the water, which I turned into a massive coal generator plant. And you are super close to the oil which is just across the way. And so you can expand to oil and fuel production as well as plastic and rubber when you want to. You're also super close to these clustered groups of resources, including sulfur and caterium, which is fantastic for being able to make those more advanced resources. And they are right at your fingertips. The only thing this place does not have going for it is bauxite. And the closest bauxite location is located in the Pink Forest, but we don't speak about that. It's not the end of the world. You can always build a train line to the bauxite in a safer location if you'd like to. But this space is fantastic. Now, there definitely is a vertical challenge that's presented to you because of the different layerings here. But what's nice about it is actually a lot of these vertical plateaus are pretty wide. And so I was able to turn these into some really interesting factory elements inside of my offline game. The other small con is that there's a small bog here and the fog can get a little bit thick and a little annoying to work next to, but you can always turn fog off in the game using a console command. To open that up, hold control shift and the L key and this activates the console. And then to open the console, you press the tilde key. For US keyboards, it's the key underneath your escape key. And then type into the console r.fog at a space and then the number zero. And if you press enter, this disables all the fog elements in the game. So if you find that the fog is kind of bothering you or it's making it really hard for you to see elements of your factory, you can use this console command to shut the fog off. If later you change your mind, you can always turn the fog back on by doing r.fog space one, and that will re-enable the fog in the game. That was my ranked list for spawns and satisfactory. I let you in on my super secret base location. Use that to good use. I would love to see the kind of creations that you guys put there and how you use that space to create a base. I bet it's gonna be very different than the way that I did. And I love seeing those comparisons between players. If this was helpful, drop a like and a comment down below. I would love to hear which of the spawn locations you first started in Satisfactory or which spawn location you plan to start up your next base in. If there was a spot that I have not seen yet or I didn't mention, I would love to know if there is a better spawn location than the one that I presented to you here. Otherwise, definitely check us out on Twitch. We are streaming three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting at 2 p.m. Central European time, 8 a.m. Eastern time. We're working through some of the late game technologies so you can come and check out how we set up those all clad aluminum sheets. And I'll catch you guys in our next video here on YouTube or our live stream on Twitch. Take it easy.